Hello students, so I would like on this um, video to talk about push down tomata and context free languages um, related to topic four. So um, we just uh, finished our uh, chapter on regular languages and uh, we saw that uh, the following language refer to zero, zero and one n is not regular. Right? Remember, uh, we actually even uh, looked at uh, the pumping lemma that allows us to determine that this is not a regular language. Um, um, and remember that zero star one star is regular, but zero and one n is not regular. Okay, so that opens a whole um, new area of investigation in uh, the field of computing theory and um, of, of non-regular languages. And uh, this new area is about context-free languages. Context-free languages contain, non, uh, contain regular languages and non-regular languages. Okay, so um, what is context-free? What is a context-free language? It's a language that is generated by a context-free grammar or a push-down automata. So let's look at a context-free grammar. A context-free grammar uh, CFG for, in short, uh, has the following has the following form. Um, on the left, you have a variable, and then the arrow to uh, signify um, substitu a substitution rule. And then on the right, um, you have um, a string of uh, terminals and variables. Okay, so variables are usually uh, capital letters and terminals are uh, conventionally numbers or um, lower case letters. Um, so the following is a grammar, a context-free grammar, because uh, it really has this uh, form, as I said, okay, the form is variable and then uh, a string that includes um, variable, variables, and or terminals. Okay, um, and so the empty string is going to be a terminal, the zero is a terminal, one is a terminal here. Our language is um, described just like in um, uh, in regular languages, our alphabet, sorry, is uh, zero, one. Okay, um, so what does the CFG um, generate as a, as a language? Well, you just follow the substitution rule, right? S can be replaced by zero, S, one, or by the empty string. So um, zero, one is in the language. But you can also replace um, s again by zero s one, so um, zero zero one one is in the language, etc. Actually, zero and one n in general is in the language, right? So, um, so the language is really uh, zero and one n, and greater or equal to zero. Um, you know, if I was actually rigorous, we say dick, and we can go on forever. Okay, so um, so that's actually the language L. So um, L is not regular, but it is a context-free language because it is generated by a context-free, it is a context-free language because it's generated, it's generated by a context-free grammar, okay, CFG. So L is a CFL, okay. Um, we saw last time that um, the, the language of well-balanced bracket was also um, not regular, and it's, it's basically the same thing as this one, right? It, it was the language was defined by open bracket and close bracket n, um, so we could um, we can we can define this this other um, language. We can uh, can be generated by the following CFG: s is replaced by open bracket s close bracket. And same thing, S can also be replaced by the empty string. Um, instead of having a duplicate of S arrow in two rules, we can also write just OR with a, a vertical line, OR 
empty string, right? So you can add as many or as you want like that on the same line if um, they all follow from S, they are all substitution for S, okay? Um, so this generates the language um, the language that we call um, you know well balanced brackets last time. Okay. Now push down a tomato. Push down a tomato PDAs. is defined, a PDA is defined by the following um, six tuple, right? So uh, NFA, DFA, finite automaton was defined by a five tuple. This one is defined by, um, the PDA is defined by a six tuple. So it has one, one more element, but it's, it's, apart from that, it's very similar, right? Um, you're gonna have, um, Q, the set of states, the alphabet, the input alphabet, the stack alphabet that is new, the um, transition function, start state, and the set of accept states, okay, final states. Um, so, um, so just, yeah, just as before, um, states, input alphabet, Stack alphabet, transition function, the uh, initial state, and the set of accept states. Okay, so it's very similar to. Um, NFA and DFA, except that we have also a stack alphabet. Remember, we said that um, what was missing for um, an automaton, to do an automaton to recognize this language, was the capacity to read and write. Okay, so in some sense, we said that an NFA DFA is a read only machine, a PDA is a read and write machine. Okay, it's very limited in terms of what it can write and how it can write it um, and when but it can write, it can write into memory what we call a stack, okay? And we can push or pop out of the stack. Um, so um, the, 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 the stack alphabet gamma is really going to be uh, the possible um, atomic symbols that can go into the stack. Sometimes gamma is just equal to sigma, okay? Um, and um, Plus, uh, because, because it's kind of convenient to have the same alphabet for both, gamma will usually have an extra symbol, um, an extra symbol. So we can say that sometimes, it's not necessary, sometimes gamma equals sigma and the dollar symbol, the extra dollar atomic symbol. The dollar symbol is convenient uh, to, um, to push into the stack at the very beginning when the stack is empty to to know when the stack is empty okay so it's kind of an indication that the stack is empty because there is no other way to read from the stack that it is empty uh, other than um having the dollar sign being this indication or any other sign it doesn't matter which one it is okay so it's kind of convenient to have a special sign to um be at the bottom of the stack to indicate emptiness and um transition function is going to be um, just like before you have uh, Q cross sigma epsilon, epsilon just because uh, we can have the empty string just like for an NFA. So this part is more or less like an NFA, okay? You, you have that, uh, you take that, but we also take um, uh, the, the, we also pop the top of the stack, okay? So um, we, ha we have this kind of reading capability if you may, if you want, okay, to kind of read, to kind of read, and this returns, just like for an NFA, it's a power set, okay, power set of state, of this, all the states, why, because like an NFA, a PDA is, at least this one is, um, the one we consider now is non-deterministic, it's very important, so you can go to multiple states, 
uh, even from the same um, you can go to a set of state from the same um, input um, inputs and even the same um, uh, symbol from the stack okay so um, so this part is also just like for an NFA okay but here in addition to um, going to a next state we also going to have the capability of writing of um, pushing okay so that's that's what we call pop and that's what we call push pushing on the on the stack and that's more or less the writing capability of uh, the PDA you know you, you write on the stack um, the read here is kind of also a read and write because when you read when you pop you don't only read um, the, um, the symbol but you also pop it out so you actually write in some sense because you eliminate it okay so um, this is a little approximation to call it read but that's for the sake of understanding okay so that's the transition function so basically a little complexification or improvement over the NFA if you, if you want um, um, okay so Maybe now, so um, let's look now at uh, an example uh, of uh, PDA that recognizes exactly the same language as the one we saw for um, with, the, with the CFG. So um, you have one in the book, page um, one, let me find it again. 115 yes so you have one page 115 okay so I'm putting it here so this PDA um, so that's that's a formal definition of a PDA now we can also write it as a diagram like we used to now the diagram is a bit more complex you need to add to the um, um, the input uh, for every transition also what it reads what it pops out and what it pushes in the stack okay so it reads here epsilon and it writes um, uh, dollar sign dollar okay so uh, it reads nothing it doesn't really need to read anything to go over this transition but it will write necessarily the dollar sign okay here what it means is that it's going to take as an input zero and in addition to taking as an input zero, it will also read um, nothing from the stack, um, but it will write the zero, okay? Uh, here on the contrary, it will read a zero, so it will take the zero out of the stack and will write nothing, okay? So it's important to understand here clearly the difference between the, the input, um, the input uh, that, is, that is read as to, to, to uh, create the, the accepted, the, the recognized language, and also the, the stack, okay? The input from the stack. So um, I usually don't use the word input for the stack um, to make sure that we don't make the confusion. So how does this work? Um, here we start with, um, so if, if you look, you start at, at Q1. Uh, Q1 is an accept state, so you can have the empty string empty string is accepted okay so empty string is part of our language um, it's part of the recognized language okay and we're going to try to complete that list okay um, but um, now I need a little more space now um, we, we start here we're going to first um, go to Q2 and and push the dollar sign in the stack, okay? Um, and then we don't read any input, right? There's no input, uh, and we don't take anything out of the stack. We just push dollar sign, that's the first thing we do. Then we have a, a loop here on Q2. We can do as many times as we want. If we receive the input zero in the, so that's, that's part of the language, we can receive zero uh, multiple times, okay? Uh, and as long as we receive zero, we um, do not read anything. We do not take the dollar sign out. We do not read anything. Uh, we don't need to read anything. We just need to stack 
some zeros here, okay? So we're gonna stack a bunch of zeros, okay? On top of the dollar sign for X number of time, okay? Let's say that this is uh, N number of times, okay? Then um, as, as soon as you accept one as an input, in your uh, from from the string the input string, as soon as you have saved one, what you do is you read the zero, and you replace it by nothing. So that means you pop out the zero. The first time, when you have the one. And as soon as you as long as you have other ones coming in, you do exactly the same thing. Uh, how many times? Um, well, as many times as you want, but if you want to go to the accept state on Q4, you're going to have to meet the condition of receiving nothing, so any, any, any input, so it can be just after the first one, but reading the dollar sign. And you're not going to be able to read the dollar sign unless you go down the stack n times, right? Because this is the size n. So you need n ones here to be able to go all the way down to the dollar sign. And only once you're in the dollar sign can you go to Q4. And you have to go to Q4 to go to an accept state because you cannot uh, accept an extra one here. If you try to accept an extra one, it won't. It won't. The, the transition function won't let you go in to Q3 again because you would have to read a zero and there is no more zero there's the stack is empty there's only the dollar sign okay so you read the dollar sign you take out the dollar sign you put nothing in it um, you go to Q4 you you have an accepted state okay so either empty string or basically 0 n 1 n okay that's what it is. So we recognize exactly the same language as this. So basically what we're saying is that this is equivalent to this, okay? So this, the context-free grammar here is equivalent to the push PDA here insofar as this grammar generates the same language that this PDA recognize. Okay, grammar generate PDA recognize. Now we start to have a lot of terminology and let's try to clean up things a little bit. Okay, uh, we have um, we have we have automata, um, regular expression, context-free grammar, context-free language. So let's try to, to clean to clean this up a little bit. So for that, I I, I drew I drew a little a little diagram that helps you um, figure this out. Okay, so um, a finite automata can be an NFA, DFA, recognizes a regular language, okay? And also a regular expression, a regular expression generates a regular language, okay? So it generates the regular language, okay? It goes into the regular language. And because of that, we can say that irregular expressions are equivalent to finite automata with respect to what they both like recognize slash generate. Okay, it's the same, same class of languages. Now, over the regular expressions, you have context-free grammar. Okay, uh, regular expressions are in some sense um, part of the context-free grammar. I think that the inclusion here is um, a little bit abusive because um, it's complicated to say a regular expression is a context-free grammar. Um, it's not per se a context-free grammar because it doesn't have exactly the same formal definition. Same thing for finite automaton and PDA. It's not per se a PDA because it doesn't have the same formal definition. But, um, but what we can say However, and in this sense, it's not abusive. I mean, it's not abusive. I mean, it's not a, um, an approximation. That's what I mean. Uh, is that any PDA uh, can be, um, can have, I mean, any finite automaton can have an equivalent definition as a PDA. And any regular expression can have an equivalent definition as a context-free grammar. That's 
we can say, and they did this sense the concentric, the, the inclusion here makes sense. Um, so uh, now the context-free grammar is going to also generate, okay, same vocabulary, generate a context-free language. The PDA, the um, push-down automata, is going to recognize a context-free language also. Um, uh, the, the class of language that the PDA recognizes, I should say, is um, the class of context-free languages, and same thing for context-free grammars, okay? So, in so far as they recognize generally slash the same class of languages, we can also say that context-free grammars and PDA are equivalent. Okay, next time in the next video, we will see what uh, are the limits of um, of uh, context-free uh, languages uh, and what is not an example of what is not a context-free languages and it will involve like in a previous lesson a lecture uh, also um, another version of the pump pumping lemma thank you very much for your attention